Welcome back. So this lesson we're going to talk about the change tracker inside the anti-framework core because you'll notice right here we got this exception and I'll try and explain why it happens. Uh, if you read the exception it seems that a customer cannot be tracked an, uh, more than once with the same ID inside this change tracker right here and that's why it kind of throws a conflict something with conflicting key values, right? Now that would be the same in database like we just talked about. You cannot add a customer twice with the same ID in the database. It's the same thing here. You cannot track in your context the same customer with the same ID twice. That makes sense, right? Because if I had the same customer with the same ID, I couldn't look them up anymore because, well, they had the same ID. So how do we fix this? Well, let's try and jump into the code before we do it. I'll fix it in the next lesson because I want to show you guys the change tracker first. Now the change tracker, you can get that by calling your context dot change tracker and then you can actually using enter entries right here you can get all the things that are currently being monitored inside your context everything in memory right now you can actually get a list of all of that inside this change tracker right here you can also be specific and say I only want to track a specific table or a specific class in the change tracker in my case customer I want to know what customers are available in the change tracker right now so what customers have we loaded from database into the in-memory DB context right now. Now this is very valuable. I'm going to add it right here inside my inside my um, order repository and I'm also going to add it inside my customer repository the same change tracker right here inside the read by ID. I added it here as well and there I'll also explain I only want to get the customers right. I don't want to get all my different entities. I'm only right now interested in the customers because we're not going to use that data for something inside the system. Let me just try and restart this and see and show you guys what happens. I'll just run into debug mode right here and restart and just show you the change tracker. So the program's running again. Let's just try and do the post again just to try and see what actually happens. So first of all you need to understand when we are hitting the controller right here and creating our order, of course what we do is we go down and we say uh, create order in the post request, right? Now that's going to hit the order service and ask that guy to create an order, right? Now the problem is that the first thing I do right here is I actually read the customer. So when I read the customer now, I'm going to get that customer into my context. I hope that makes sense. So now it's inside the context. Now the read customer, let me just try and jump to the first breakpoint that I set inside the customer repository. Notice I put a breakpoint right here. So if I check out the change tracker right now, before I hit this breakpoint, let's just expand this and you'll notice that right now in the results down here, there's nothing in there at all. It's blank. I'm not tracking anything in the context, just like I talked about last time. It's a blank context. So let's just try and read by ID now, get the first customer right here that hits the that matches the where clause. I'll just step over once. It'll now go and get the customer in the database. And now let's have a look at the change tracker again, because now it should actually contain in results the first customer and there we go. Now he knows that that guy is now in the context. He's not only in the database, I pulled him into memory now because I need him. Hope that makes sense. Let's continue this now. What will happen is I'll hit the second breakpoint that I put in there. I put a breakpoint in when I actually create the, the order and that's because in the order service when I've read that the customer exists, I'll go down here and I'll try to create the order. So now I hit the second breakpoint inside the order repository where I again have a change tracker just to show you guys if I mouse over again you'll notice that still I have this customer in here, right? Because I didn't do anything, I just got to a new area. But what I'm doing now will make it explode because what I'm doing is when I step over the first time, I figure out there's a new customer here. Now this customer is not being tracked yet. He's a new customer that I sent from Postman. If you look at the body right here, it's this customer. So he's not being tracked yet. And all I do is then attach him to the context right here. But the problem is this guy has ID of one, and if I look at my change tracker, I also have a customer in here and that customer also have the ID of one. So now the change tracker will explode just like it would with a database explaining that you're not allowed to have the same customer twice. And that's why I'm, I'm not able to reattach him once more. So let me just continue so you guys can see that I get back and see this exception again. Okay, so that's the change tracker and the change tracker is pretty powerful. Let me just try and show you. You can go read about the change tracker in here and about all the things you can start tracking with the change tracker. Um, it's, it's a pretty powerful thing, so you can go in and play around with that if you want to, but for debugging, it's very powerful in my mind. So next lesson, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the change tracker to kind of figure out if things are already attached or not, and then if they're not, then I'll attach them. So see you in the next lesson, we'll have even more fun.